Welcome back to Talk Smack with Mac. In this segment, we're going to be talking top five NBA players of the 2010s. Let's talk smack. The 2010s was drastically different from the decade before. The 2010s was all about offensive firepower, three-point shooting, and it was a change of the NBA. You know, the 2000s was defense, slow pace, offensive ratings was low, you know, half-court offenses, and then you have this guy, Steph Curry, comes around, he changes the game of basketball, and now everybody's shooting from half-court. 2010s is different, it's exciting, and there's a lot of points scored. Now, before I jump into the top five, I want to throw some honorable mentions out there. There's been a lot of great players in this decade, but some people just can't make my list. There's five spots, so some good people are going to be on the outside looking in. And it wouldn't be a, a top five list if I don't mention my man Kobe Bryant. You know, he was productive in the first three years of this of the 2010 decade. And, you know, three solid years from Kobe Bryant is good enough to get his name mentioned, people. What can I say? Mamba out. The next guy I want to bring up, and some people might give me some hate for this, but Kawhi Leonard. He's a star. He's a defensive monster. He's like a Scottie Pippen of this time. Kawhi Leonard won two championships in the 2010s. He won some finals MB MVPs. He won a championship on two different teams. This guy, he did his damn thing in the 2010s, but it ain't good enough to make my list. Two other people, they started their career together, and they ended up teaming up later in their careers. James Harden and Russell Westbrook. These dudes are absolutely fantastic players. Scoring machines, triple doubles, they can do it all. Not enough to make my list, though. Coming in at number five on my top five players of the 2010s is none other than Chris Paul. This dude has been absolutely dynamic since he came into the league, and the 2010s is no different. A lot of people thought, you know, him going to the Thunder, him going to the Rockets. This was the downslope of Chris Paul. And hold your horses, people. No, it's not. This dude went to Phoenix, and in his first season, he brought them to the championship. Yes, that ain't the 2010s, but it's all good. It just shows his longevity and how solid he was throughout the 2010 decade. Some accolades for Chris Paul in the 2010s. He was a seven-time NBA All-Star. Three NBA First team appearances. Six time All NBA defense. You know, the accolades go on and on. He won a couple assist titles. He's always up there in the, in the steals leader. Chris Paul is that guy. He is the John Stockton of our generation. Shout out to CP3. Keep on doing your thing. Unfortunately, I don't think you're going to get a championship in your career, but it's good enough. You have done enough to make my top five list, and we are going to go into number four. And you guys might give me some hate for this, but it's all good, people. It's none other than Giannis Antetokounmpo. This dude, yes, say what you will. Beginning of the 2010s, he didn't do much. I think he got drafted in like 2013, and it took him a few years to get going. But once this guy got going, he has been a freight train ever since. He is the modern-day Shaq. This dude is absolutely dominant, unstoppable, and if you fast forward to the 2010s, this dude won a championship. But that's neither here or there. We're sticking to the 2010s, and the way he dominated the 2010s was good enough for me. He won an MVP or two, Defensive Player of the Year. This dude is absolutely dominant, and his last five years from 2015 to 2020 was just absolutely unstoppable. Name one player in the league that can stop this guy. I can't. We're going to see what happens and see if he can make that list next decade. But for now, Giannis Antetokounmpo, number four on my list of top five players of the 2010s. Number three on my list of top five players of the 2010s is this scoring machine, Kevin Durant. Arguably the greatest scorer of all time, most efficient scorer for sure. This dude could bomb it from deep. His mid range is unstoppable. He could take it to the rim and use his length. He's seven foot with the crazy wingspan. He handles like a guard. He has all the offensive moves and counters that you need to be productive in this league. And at the end of the day, the dude is seven feet. He could just pull up and shoot over anybody. It doesn't matter. He's a two-time NBA champion, two-time final MVP during the 2010 decade. He made an all-NBA team every single year. Most of the time, he was on that first team. 
This dude, he won an MVP. He was absolutely unstoppable. The knock on Kevin Durant is that he joined the the 73-win team Golden State Warriors, and that was how he got them rings. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Kevin Durant is a freak of nature, an offensive juggernaut. This dude could do it all. And then he put it together defensively, too, when he was playing for the Warriors. His shot blocking got better. His passing got better. Stealing the ball got better. His overall defensive awareness got better. Kevin Durant is that guy. On this next spot, coming in at number two on the top five NBA players of the 2010s, is my man, the transcending talent, this dude changed the game of basketball, Mr. Steph Curry. Now, I know what you're thinking. KD goes to the Warriors. They win championships. KD gets finals MVP. You know, on the other championship that the Warriors won that Steph won before KD came, Steph still didn't get finals MVP. So how could this guy be above Kevin Durant? Well, let me start right here. Steph didn't leave his team. Steph didn't join anybody else. People came to want to play with this guy because he's so spectacular. He changed the game of basketball. He came in. He came in and he started shooting threes from everywhere. It didn't matter. His shot off the dribble is something that we have never seen. He doesn't have the the usual spot up three point shot like the Ray Allens and the Reggie Millers and his running mate Clay Thompson. Steph Curry is pulling off the dribble from any angle in between his legs, behind his back, straight up and down. It doesn't matter. Fading away, out of bounds. Seems like if Steph Curry throws the ball up, it's going in. But when you have such an impact on the game of basketball to where the game completely changes, i.e. Wilt Chamberlain, they started making new rules to stop this guy. Steph Curry is just so dominant that every other team in the NBA tried to mimic what he was doing. It was coming off of screens and putting up threes, shooting from way behind the three-point line. He just changed basketball forever for the rest of our lives, for the rest of the he history of basketball, Steph Curry will be mentioned because of how he dominated and changed the game. Shout out to Steph Curry, and because of all of that, you're reaching number two on my top five spots. We all know who's coming in at number one. The King, you know, arguably the GOAT, one of the greatest players ever, if not the greatest, LeBron James. This dude was just unstoppable. He reached the finals almost every single year in the 2010s. It didn't matter what team he was playing for. Uh, he started with, with Cleveland, then he went to the Heat, and then he went to the Lakers. It doesn't matter. This guy wins and elevates his team wherever he goes. He can pass. He can shoot. He can, he can rebound. He plays defense. Even in his later years, LeBron is still playing great defense. What can't this man do? He makes the people around him better, and he elevates everybody's game. He's probably one of the greatest leaders in all of sports history. His basketball IQ is probably higher than everybody else's. This dude is just great. Hate him. Love him. It doesn't matter. What we can say and we cannot deny is the talent that this guy has. LeBron James has came into the NBA and just left a lasting impact that everybody will remember forever and when you're mentioned in the same breath as Michael Jordan and you're you're fighting for that position of the greatest basketball player ever you should be the number one player of the decade and LeBron James has been another none other than that in the 2010s LeBron James has went to the finals eight times come on eight it doesn't matter what team he was on who was his teammates all we knew is that LeBron was going to be fighting for that championship he could single-handedly take a team to the championship, as we have all seen. He is competing against the Golden State Warriors. They had to bring in a man called Kevin Durant, and that was the only way they were going to stop LeBron James. When you say super team, that's what the Warriors had, and that's what they needed to stop this man. And when he came and he beat that 73-9 and Golden State Warriors team, that solidified his spot as not only the best player of the 2010s, but arguably the greatest player ever. Shout out to LeBron James. I want to thank you for giving us one hell of a decade of watching basketball. Your dominance will never be forgotten and is cemented in the history books. That's my top five list for the top players of the 2010s. 
Let me know what you think. Leave your comments down below. If you hate my list, love my list, I want to hear your thoughts and opinions. Who should have made my list? If you guys think that I left somebody out or if you're mad because your favorite player didn't make my list, let me know what you think. And I will remind you why they weren't good enough to make my list. I'm out. What? What?